Hi everyone! November has been really bad for astronomy here in Porto, in Portugal, and um, there are two reasons for that. First of all, the weather is really bad. November is notorious for that because it's raining almost every day or it's cloudy at least and uh, so I have no hope for the rest of the month because there's another reason is that government introduced new set of restrictions sort of lockdown with the uh, restricted hours of going outside so it's actually almost not possible to be during the night time anywhere outside your house so that's how I spend my days now, just, uh, you know, with a glass of uh, Porto wine and uh, scrolling through the Astro Bean, looking for images of people who, who were more lucky than me and uh, had some time to image space. And the other day I found really interesting thing. I was uh, scrolling through the image of the day feed and uh, you know there are gorgeous pictures uh, all of them but one of them caught my attention let me show you where is it it was a picture of the day on 26 October 2020 by Matt Harbison so, first of all, I didn't read the description, I just saw that it's a wide field Orion constellation uh, view and uh, I thought, yeah, I mean, it's pretty uh, common view of it, all of those red uh, Barnard loop, uh, all of those red gases, uh, H-alpha, but then I read the description and it says, like, Orion 200 panel mosaic. And I was like, what? 200 panel mosaic just for this view? Like I could imagine 200 panels enough to capture the whole night sky. I was really shocked to see it. And um, before we get into the image, I would like to, uh, for those who don't know, just to introduce what the Orion constellation is or to quickly recap uh, how it looks like. So usually on the night sky we can see it as this, uh, yeah basically this constellation. I can even turn on constellation labels and um, even those weird constellation arts, but I prefer not to look at them. So here I set the time to 28th of uh, December this year and uh, just to show that when the moon is really close to Orion uh, so you can imagine the scale, um, how big it is, it's really a large portion of the sky and um, this one of constellations which really dominates the sky during the winter time and uh, especially in uh, January, February, you start seeing pretty early, like it's, uh, let me see if we go to the, yeah, for example, on January 15, or no, sorry, let me set the time, yeah, it's already pretty high at 7 p.m. in January, and uh, it's right on the south in, uh, at least uh, in the northern hemisphere but uh, this constellation really is visible from almost any part of the earth that's why it's very famous and it's one of uh, most studied uh, constellations and set of objects uh, yeah it's really rich for different deep sky objects uh, and we're gonna get to that in a minute uh, one more thing I'd like to show you is uh, where the Orion uh, constellation is placed relatively to us in our galaxy. For that I will use Photopeak Sky Survey, which I introduced in a previous video. So if we are looking into the center of our galaxy, 
from the, our perspective, the sun is situated somewhere in the middle uh, point between the center and the most outside part of the galaxy. So Orion Nebula is actually almost uh, like on this point of view where we look yeah, almost exactly to the opposite direction uh, from the center of our galaxy. So it's really like on our galaxy's backyard. And um, you can see that it's really rich in terms of um, all of these red gases, uh, H-alpha, hydrogen, and uh, there's a lot of objects to observe. It's, uh, they are very bright. Yeah, it's just really cool constellation and uh, for amateur uh, astrophotographers, astronomers, like plenty of objects to see. So yeah, let's get back to this 200 panel mosaic. The author, Matt, he left uh, here a link for everybody to see it full resolution. And uh, yeah, it's uh, really unbelievable just when I first time saw it, I thought, yeah, cool, cool image, but uh, what if I zoom in? And um, when I started zooming in, I realized how huge it is and how detailed uh, image it gives me, how big is the resolution. So you can get like literally any object of the Orion Nebula, really close view of it. It's uh, just really amazing. You can just travel across it in a different ways. And uh, then I thought, how is it possible at all? Like how much effort, how much time does it take to make something like this? And then uh, I went, there's actually a link in the bottom right corner back to the project home. So it uh, gets you to the Matt's personal website called Space for Everybody and there's the whole set of pages uh, dedicated solely to this project Orion, how he called it. And um, there's a lot of interesting information, the story behind it. Uh, you can go also to public speaking section and uh, find the video from the live um, sort of YouTube live of, uh, where Matt went through the whole process, the story, how he did it. But if we just go to this about the image section, first of all, we can see how those 200 panels were actually laid out. And uh, yeah, when you just realize how small each of them and uh, what it takes to just shoot them all first and uh, to stitch them, um, yeah, I just couldn't believe that it was possible. So, in reality, it was 267 individual panels because uh, it included reshoots. Some of them were probably corrupted in some ways, or not. Uh, the quality was not uh, did not satisfy satisfy Matt enough. And uh, yeah, there's some data on it. I think it was on the Astro Bean where he mentioned, or somewhere else, that each panel required two and a half hours of exposure. So you can imagine 200 panels, each of them requires two and a half hours. And um, the overall imaging hours is 640.8. It's, I don't know, like, it's hard to imagine how much time is spent just on the exposures. And uh, he spent more than 500 just editing. Apparently, um, although the process was somewhat automated, um, it still required a lot of uh, manual editing and the stitching. And it uh, resulted in a 2.5 gigapixel image, which is just incredible size. And the resolution of 1.6 uh, arc seconds per pixel, I believe. And the most interesting thing is that he spent five years just doing this image. It's unimaginable amount of time. I just have to drink to that, sorry. I can't even imagine spending a week on an image, but five years. Matt really deserves attention to this work because 
it's really just an amazing way to give people opportunity to explore this constellation which everybody probably sees uh, even when I did not uh, get into the astronomy I always uh, was curious about these three stars aligned together and never thought that it's a part of this huge Orion uh, constellation and then when I've learned how rich it is for different objects uh, and I keep imaging them them because it's really almost infinite source of different deep sky objects and uh, if we uh, I actually found a way on this page to to go to this uh, development console and found this viewer object and uh, we go to the viewport and then we can set rotation to 90 degrees and this way we get more uh, although it's not taken the whole screen or uh, in the landscape view but I think this is this view is more common for people just uh, when we look at the sky uh, if the Orion appears more vertical and um, this way we can just explore for a long time just really incredible how the stars are exposed the witch head nebula this reflection nebula then m42 is just gorgeous and look how close we can get in this image so i probably can spend several not sure about hours but an hour just uh, going through all of this data and it's stitched like very nicely almost seamlessly at least i can't find uh, any major problems with this image horse head nebula and when you just think about it like i've read that whole horse head nebula is around three light years in diameter and uh, can you imagine three light years it's like if this is our sun this is going to be the closest star uh, Proxima Centauri or uh, I don't remember exactly how it's called but yeah which takes four light years to uh, get there and uh, the scale of this whole space uh, object is just really unimaginable flame nebula and the Barnard loop you can see it all just incredible the amount of details Betelgeuse star just see how you can zoom in and just enjoy how yellowish it is this giant gigantic star which can explode any moment I'm not sure I've read that the scientists predict that it's not gonna explode very soon but who knows if it explodes we probably will face uh, consequences on earth because it's huge and uh, if it gets to the supernova so yeah i really encourage everyone to just go check this image out because really men spent five years doing that and uh, it's unique in many senses and i think images like this are very important to educate people because uh, human becomes more and more space civilization and uh, we just need to be uh, really like kids are taught uh, ge geography since being very little knowing about all those uh, land marks on earth so we need to be really more aware of what we have really close to us is just uh, you know uh, 1.5 thousand light years not very far at least we should be aware that it exists it exists right now it's right there the constellation itself it can be enjoyed in the very light polluted areas anyway of course we won't see all of those details that's why we have those very sensitive cameras but even if you have a pretty basic camera with a manual mode you can already see m42 and uh, probably get some details of all of this um, ionized hydrogen so really just take a look at this image get to know some objects it has uh, 
this information mode, which is actually even more incredible. And yeah, I forgot to mention this. This information mode uh, give, gives some, first of all, it highlights uh, the constellation itself, all those lines which comprise the constellation. And uh, also different objects are highlighted with a circle. But the most fascinating part is that all of those blue labels are actually galaxies. They are probably not very visible here on this image. Um, I didn't really understand um, most of them, if it's a star or galaxy, because they are really far. But there is one galaxy you can actually zoom into. Let me find it. Where was it? Oh yeah, here it is. And you can see it really vividly. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this video and uh, please take a look at this image. It's incredible image, uh, incredible work by Matt. And uh, I will put all those links to the description so you can read about it and see some other videos. Thanks and bye.